Hey everyone, my name is Orvalida. I'm a software engineer and cloud architect. And in this video, we're going to learn how we can use GitHub Copilot to improve our code. Now, there are four areas that I really want to focus on when I talk about improving our code. The first is code quality. So this means how can we use GitHub Copilot to enhance the readability, maintainability, and the efficiency of our code? There's also code reliability. So how can we improve the robustness of our code? Can we improve how we handle errors? And can we actually use GitHub Copilot to improve the stability of our code? Then there's performance. So can we use GitHub Copilot to optimize the speed, memory usage, and also the efficiency of our code? And then finally, we'll look at code security. So how we can use GitHub Copilot to enhance the security, privacy, and protection of our code and the data that our code has to handle. So first up, let's look at how we can use GitHub Copilot to improve the quality of our code. Now, as we've learned in previous videos, we use prompts to communicate our intent to GitHub Copilot. So this requires us to really have a clear understanding of what we want to achieve. The point of GitHub Copilot, it's an AI pair programmer. You're still in the driving seat and you still need to take control and give GitHub Copilot the proper intent of what you're actually wanting to do. So here you need to keep your prompts concise, specific, and focused. So I've got this banking, well, this console application that represents uh, transfers uh, between various different bank accounts. So I'm going to open up a terminal. And once that's opened, I'm just going to go .NET run. Run that, and that should simulate some banking, um, uh, create some bank accounts for me and simulate transfers between those accounts. There we go. So it's created a bunch of accounts for me and simulated some transfers. Some have failed, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay. So fairly straightforward. So as developers, there are a couple of factors that we need to consider when working on code quality, code quality improvements. So the first thing is readability. How readable is our code? Uh, complexity. Is our code too complex to be understood? and also modularity as well. Can we break our code into smaller reusable modules to make the code easier to manage and maintain? As we've learned through our other videos, when we use um, GitHub Copilot and we ask it to perform a task for us, we need to provide a clearly defined context and intent. The intent of our prompts really des describes the goal that we want to achieve, while the context tells GitHub Copilot what resources to consider. So with that in mind, let's look at this uh, console application and let's define the outer context that's kind of scoped higher than the code that we want to update. So if I scroll down here, so this generate random account holder method, this is the one I'm going to focus on initially. If I want to ask it up Copilot to refactor this method for me, I can specify the class or file that contains this method as the outer context. And then this method here will be my inner context. And we've learned that we can use chat participants and chat variables to help specify that context. So GitHub has a file and a selection chat variables that we can use to identify specific code that we're focused on. And we could also include the full workspace when needed. And you, with that in mind, we can also um, use that context to refine our intent to make it clear and specific. So let's actually use this as an example. So I've highlighted that generated uh, generate random account holder uh, method. And I'm going to go ahead, control hold I, and that's going to open up a chat for me. So I'm going to use that workspace chat participant. And then I'm going to use the explain command. And then I'm going to select the file program.cs. And then I'm going to go or ask it, how can I improve the readability make sure I can spell of the selected code. Cool. So now GitHub Copilot is going to use my workspace as a reference. And it's also going to use this program.cs file as a reference as well, because that's the file I've selected. So it's given me some suggestions here on how I can actually make this code a little bit more readable. So use meaningful variable names, extract constants, uh, random instance reuse. So every time it's looking at, um, every time that I'm calling this method, it's saying that I'm creating a new instance. It's that's and saying that's quite inefficient. And then also some comments as well. So looking at the code that it suggested, 
So here's a way that I could actually make this a little bit more readable using um, uh, with the uh, suggestions that GitHub Copilot has provided. So what I can do is I can actually start to extract this, go back up to the top of my program class. So extract that um, static or constant variable. Um, I can come here and extract the, uh, make a reusable random instance. And then for that generate random account method, just gets more real estate. Scroll back down to my actual method. There it is. I can go ahead and just replace that there. Cool. So that makes it a little bit more readable. So we've reduced the uh, number of times that we're creating this random instance, and we've enhanced the maintainability of our method by centralizing the list of names through that constant that we've put up here um, in my uh, program.cs file. We can also ask GitHub Copilot to suggest how we can actually improve the maintainability of our code. So this time I've highlighted the generate random account type method. And again, I'm going to use the workspace chat participant, the explain command, and then use my program.cs file. And go, how, oh, how can I improve the maintainability of the selected code? GitHub Copilot's pretty good with spelling mistakes. Um, so that doesn't matter. But anyway, what we're getting is we're getting some suggestions on how we can actually improve the maintainability of our code. So it's saying um, reducing code duplication using um, dependency injections. Uh, it's giving me quite a few suggestions actually. Implement error handling, use data-driven techniques. So what GitHub Copilot will do with the explain command, it will give some high-level suggestions and then further down, it will actually show you or give you an example on how you can refactor it. Um, the point that I want to make here is that this may not represent a complete solution. And sometimes GitHub Copilot can get this wrong, depending on the context that you've given it. Um, so just use your judgment and use your experience and knowledge of your programming language that you're using um, before just going ahead and just implementing this. It's a Copilot after all. You have to use your own kind of subjectivity for it. And then finally, we can also um, actually use GitHub Copilot to ask, well, how can I make this code? How can I improve, sorry, the modularity of the selected code? So I'm going to use that generate account, uh, random account type um, method again. So it's using that as the context. So again, it's going to give me some suggestions on how I can actually make this code more modular. So again, it's talking about separating concerns, um, a little bit about centralizing configuration. Um, so I'm using that string array for account types. It's telling me maybe I can move that to a centralized place um, and also creating a separate service for account generation. So kind of removing that from my main um, program.cs um, class and putting that somewhere else. Now let's turn our attention to using GitHub Copilot to improve the reliability and performance of our code. Now, like all suggestions from GitHub Copilot, it doesn't always represent the best practices for improving reliability and performance in your code. You as the developer still need to use your judgment and knowledge of your programming language that you're coding in to evaluate the suggestions that GitHub Copilot provides. So it's not there as a replacement for you, it's an AI pair programmer. With that in mind, let's think about some prompts that we can use to generate suggestions to improve the reliability of our code. First up, let's look at exception handling. So I'm going to go into my bank account and I'm going to highlight all the code in this file. I'll start a new chat actually, and I'll go workspace explain file. This time I'm going to use the bank account file and I'm just going to ask it, how can I improve exception handling in the selected code. So what GitHub Copilot will do, it will use the context of my um, bank account.cs file, and it's going to give me some suggestions. So it's saying I could use more specific exception types. It could provide detailed error messages, uh, consider some validation methods, and um, 
oh, missed that one. Uh, use finally blocks or using statements to kind of clean up and then log the exceptions as well. And it's given me some example of, spe of specific exception types that I can use along with some detailed messages, which is pretty cool. Let me actually open this up a little bit. So there we go. So invalid operation exception and then pass, um, return the message transfer amount exceeds maximum limit for different account holders. And then it shows me how I can actually implement those customer exceptions myself, which is pretty, pretty cool. Now let's take a look at how we can actually uh, craft a prompt that helps us to get suggestions from GitHub Copilot on how we can actually improve the performance of our code. So I'll actually step out of my bank account.cs file and come back into my program CS file. I'll start a new chat uh, just to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to go workspace, explain, file. Notice how I'm setting the context very clearly to GitHub Copilot to make sure that you know it uses that program.cs file as the uh, context. So when I provide the intent, how can I improve the performance? I'm going to use asynchronous tasks or methods in this file. So I've given my intent and I've provided GitHub with the context. And then it's going to give me some suggestions based on um, best practices around asynchronous tasks. Now, I'm not interacting with any databases or making any network calls within this program.cs file. It's a very simple console application. However, and it's and it knows that as well. It's given me uh, some code suggestions on um, how I can actually make this code a little bit more robust in terms of asynchronous programming. So I can go ahead and mark some methods as asynchronous. That if um, if I'm you know creating accounts that's interacting to a database, that's going to be an I/O operation. So this is how I would modify that account creation method to be asynchronous and show me how I can actually handle. Um, actually use tasks to make it more asynchronous and also uh, use try catch. So if there are any exceptions, I can throw exceptions to the console. Uh, it's given me some suggestions for handling CPU bound work. Um, and then just given me some notes there about asynchronous programming, saying that it can make my code more uh, complex. So I should really only apply it where it makes sense. Um, any libraries or frameworks that I'm going to be using needs to support those asynchronous operations and just make sure that I'm not uh, introducing any blocking calls within my code, which is pretty cool. Finally, let's take a look at how we can use GitHub Copilot to improve the security of our code. Now, it's very important to point out, and I don't want any security professionals coming after me because I'm not a security professional. I'm a software engineer and cloud architect. I say that for a very explicit reason, um, but suggestions from GitHub Copilot do not always represent the best practices or even comprehensive solutions around how you can develop secure code. As developers yourselves, you still need to use your judgment and expertise to implement secure code, as well as working alongside your security teams to ensure that the code that you write doesn't introduce any vulnerabilities to your organization or to your applications. Okay, so with that in mind, Let's look at some of the prompts that we can give GitHub Copilots to get some suggestions around how we can actually improve um, the security of our code. Again, only suggestions work for your security teams. Don't just get suggestions from GitHub Copilot and then push to um, um, production. Cool. So I'm going to use my bank account.cs file for this. I'll use a new chat as well. And again, I'm going to use the workspace chat participant, explain, and I'm going to explicitly uh, select the bank account.cs file. How can I protect uh, sensitive data in this class? And I'll just select, um, just prompted me to select those files, which is pretty cool. And then it's going to give me some suggestions. So again, to protect sensitive data in this bank account class, I can use some secure data types. So it's picked up that account number is pretty important. So that could be a little bit more secure. I could limit access to uh, with properties. 
uh, can validate the input data to make sure that when someone creates a new instance of the bank account class, it's going to be a valid um, instantiation of that class. I can implement logging with care. So again, it's told me that yes, logging is good, but I need to be cautious about logging potentially sensitive information. We don't want to expose that um, in any way, which attackers or hackers could use to manipulate that. Um, use encapsulation for sensitive methods, uh, secure data and memory and exception handling. So I've got a bunch of uh, suggestions from GitHub Copilot on how I can actually make this bank account, .cs, uh, bank account class sorry, a little bit more secure. And then it's given me an example on encrypting and decrypting a property. Um, and it's shown me how I could potentially do that using C Sharp as well. But again, remember, GitHub Copilot is there to make suggestions, particularly when it comes to security. Uh, work alongside your security teams, use your past experience, and just use GitHub Copilot as a copilot. It's called that for a reason to help you um, make more informed decisions about your code, but don't just rely on it completely. It's still generative AI at its source. Cool. So that wraps up this video on how to improve our code using GitHub Copilot. In this video, we took a look at how we could actually use GitHub Copilot to improve the quality, reliability, performance, and security of our code. And we also learned how we can use prompts to communicate our intent to GitHub Copilot by providing a concise, specific, and focused prompt, setting the intent of our um, prompt, and providing GitHub Copilot with the proper context of what resources to consider using chat participants, chat variables, slash commands, and also providing a clear and specific intent to specify which aspect of code quality we want to improve. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more videos on GitHub Copilot or AI programming or Azure in general, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below. I hope you're having a great day no matter where you are in the world, and we will see you all next time.